Welcome to a new episode of Science in Context. I'm Sabina and this week I'm speaking with Dr. Nicholas Croucher about the immune response of children to pneumococcus. Nick, what exactly is pneumococcus? The pneumococcus is a bacterium that lives in the nasopharynx, which connects the ears, nose and throat. Most children around the world will encounter multiple different strains of this bacterium by five years of age. Normally, our immune systems keep pneumococci under control, but if they escape the nasopharynx, then they can cause severe infections such as pneumonia. Your study focused on newborns in the Mila camp for refugees in rural Thailand. Can you explain a bit more? So this study is unique in bringing together two enormous data sets. Paul Turner's team in the camp collected blood samples of nasopharyngeal bacteria monthly from hundreds of children and their mothers. 80% of the swabs were positive for pneumococci, and thousands of these were characterized by whole genome sequencing. The antibody responses to several hundred pneumococcal proteins at multiple ages were simultaneously measured using the matched blood samples. What did your study find? We found each child developed strong antibodies recognizing a common set of around 100 pneumococcal proteins during their first year of life. Each child's set of antibodies gradually expanded to recognize new proteins as children encountered new strains. However, some proteins could only be recognized by antibodies generated by the fully developed immune system of the mothers. The most interesting responses were those to a set of four proteins that are found in all pneumococcal strains that vary a lot in their sequences. Three of these limit the ability of the immune system to target pneumococci. The function of the fourth is unknown, but unexpectedly it provoked the strongest immune responses in the children. And how does this understanding of the immune response to pneumococci help us going forward? The study found weaker antibody responses to pneumococci were associated with a higher chance of suffering pneumonia early in life. Our results suggest boosting immunity in infants or pregnant mothers may be a promising way of preventing such infections. This will require improvements in the design of current vaccines, and this study will help us identify the key components we need to include in future immunizations. Thank you so much for your time today, Nick. Thank you.